Let's take a look now at the glass table inside the GDS WinBid Pro software. And remember that the glass table is a global list of glass for the entire program. So it doesn't matter which manufacturer, which catalog you have open at the time, the same list of glass is going to be available for that for every manufacturer. So and when you first load the program, there's like a default list of glass and it's you can sort it different ways by description, by thickness, by type. Um, description is pretty good because you can name the glass whatever you want and if it is one inch glass you can always put that first that's how we can sort it easily here um, but keep that in mind it, it's there's a few different ways you can do this but um, the description is kind of the first thing you'd want to use as your sorting uh, verbiage I guess and um, now these these parts that you see here these were just included as something to start with the prices I would not go by these at all because these are kind of random they're very old or they've been changed so that's something you're gonna want to go in and adjust more accurately I know that you probably uh, cost out your glass on a job by job basis but uh, if you want something general that you most often pay for a certain type of glass then you'd want to set that up here and uh, let's look more closely at it, an individual piece of glass here we can double click on this or click the edit button at the bottom and it opens up our little edit screen so this is where you would change your description uh, for insulated glass you'd want to make sure it's not only in your description but also in the uh, in the checkbox here so that the software knows that that's insulated and then the type of glass that you want to call it, there's a list of, of types to pick from. And the first letter of the type is what gets added to the drawing. So if you have a T for tempered, um, then the T is going to get added. If you have annealed, an A is going to get added. So keep that in mind. The labor code, that's important for the, the uh, way the program figures the glazing labor for the job so it knows that this is insulated glass for labor because I've selected that for the labor code and it, it's not able to really pick that out of the uh, description here it could pick it out of here but um, we decided to have a separate labor code because you can have all these different types of labor so the thickness of glass if there is no labor code then it, the program will look at the thickness and try and figure glass based on this thickness but it's a little tough because sometimes it could be uh, heavy glass that's one inch thick or you know or if it's insulated it's going to be a lot lighter so it has a different labor pro labor calculation for that your square foot price is here so remember that's your square foot price minimum block size would be say if there's a minimum of three square feet for this type of glass from a certain manufacturer or supplier we can actually put the supplier name here so you can keep track of who, who you're, whose glass you're working with but if they have a minimum then when the program sees a, a piece of glass that's only two square feet it's actually going to charge you for three square feet so if you leave that zero it's just going to give you your actual cost for square footage but uh, if you have a minimum it's going to have to do at least that minimum or more so the uh, discount quantity that would be something like a thousand pieces you get a different price like discounted by so much that's not really implemented yet so eventually that that feature will be in there and you can add a, your discount quantity um, so for now that's what you're working with with glass so you can add pieces of glass you can edit any of these delete just by clicking these buttons down here or the edit and once you've got your glass configured you can pretty much leave it but it's unlimited you can add as much glass as you want and then where that also applies obviously is when you're adding glass to an elevation so when we click the glass tab you've got that same list of glass here and instead of sorting it like we did in that previous list and it picks up by the way it picks up whatever sort order you've left that glass table with so if it's sorted by description in the glass table then that's how it's going to be sorted here but you can also just go in to this top row here this filter bar and type in uh, something to help you sort it here or we can say if I only want to look at tempered glass that's one inch I can sort through my um, my list of glass I can filter my list of glass that way by clicking up here in this filter bar so that's something you can do and then you can also add delete and view glass so let's say I want to view the glass that I have by light 
in my door light here. So I click on view by light whoop, and then I can click on that light of glass and it gives me the type of glass whether it's tempered and the actual size of the glass and that's the calculated size including the added daylight. So the added daylight is actually set in your framing system or in this case for door glass it's set in the uh, the door the door parts window so you could edit the door parts and check your add daylight for glass and if I say click on this side light then it's showing me the actual size of that glass and my added daylight for that is in my framing system uh, the elevation framing system setting once I've added the elevation so I can actually delete a light of glass just by clicking delete and then by light I can delete a row by having delete and by row, let's say I want this bottom row deleted. So that's how we would delete. And actually, you can do it by elevation. If I want to delete the whole elevation, all the glass from the whole elevation, that's how I would do it. And the same thing if I want to add it. Uh, if I want to say tempered, one inch tempered in this entire elevation, uh, tinted actually, tinted, insulated, tempered. And I want to add that to the entire elevation. I just select by elevation, click on any light in that elevation and it's added the glass. So you just have to remember you know what you're doing here whether you're deleting, adding, or viewing and then whether you want by row, by light, or by elevation. So remember by row if you click the bottom row when there's an entrance uh, and by the way I can actually overwrite if I want to clear that filter and see my whole list again I can click fil clear filter if I want to overwrite, say, that bottom row of glass with annealed, I can do add by row and click on that row, and then it's going to take out what was there and put in my annealed. Now, notice how when there's an entrance, I click on the first row for these first lights here, or this bottom row of lights, but when there's an entrance, it actually calls the transom the first row. So that's actually good when we're adding tempered because I can click on my tempered glass here, click on that first row, and it's going to put tempered glass on the bottom row and then in the transom and then continue on the bottom row here. So the transom or the uh, door lights, those would actually be by light. So it won't work by row because it's going over the door. So if I want to do by light, I just click on by light, add, and then click on the door lights of glass, and then those are assigned glass. So you'll get the hang of it. It's pretty flexible in terms of uh, being able to add, delete, and view and then also doing it by row, by light, or by elevation. So keep that filter bar in mind to help find the glass, clear the filter when you want to get back to the entire list and that's pretty much all there is to the glass.